This happened about a year ago. I had just gotten married, and although we were rich in love, we were far from rich financially. We lived in a dilapidated old house my husband had borrowed from his late grandparents' estate until we got on our feet. It was in a bad neighborhood, but we were surrounded by good people. I grew up in a crime-ridden country, and honestly, most of the US, even the bad areas, are heaven. So I was cautious, but never really uncomfortable. My husband is a firefighter, so he works 24 hours at a time. My biggest comfort was our 65-pound pit bull plot hound mix named Candy. She's a sweetheart, and unless you're a squirrel, she would never hurt you. She'd taken a liking to me since I moved in, and when my husband started working 24-hour shifts, she would follow me around the house, never leaving my side. One evening, a storm broke out. That made Candy nervous, so when she started acting up, I didn't think too much of it. I was playing video games when I heard tapping at the window. Every time I paused the game, it would stop. I assumed a tree was hitting the window, but decided to switch off the light and TV in that room, just in case. I went to let Candy out for her last potty break. As soon as I opened the door, she dashed straight to the right to my horror, towards the window that the tree was tapping on earlier. I didn't hear anything weird, and the yard was too dark to see anything. I called her back in and locked everything. I texted my husband, but he was on a call and didn't get back to me for a while. Candy and I went to bed. I must have dozed off for a while but I was awoken to Candy growling. I'd never heard anything like it. I knew something was up as soon as I heard it. I stood up and grabbed a machete. I stood still, listening carefully. Then, Candy went ballistic, running from window to window throughout the house, barking and growling. I was dialing my father-in-law, knowing he'd get there before the police, when I heard a window smash in the other bedroom. Candy was there in a flash, although I desperately tried to call her back, afraid they would shoot her or hurt her. I heard a scream and then more glass smashing, then yelling that was getting further away. Then silence. I crept to the window, and there was blood everywhere. Candy had a bloody t-shirt sleeve in her mouth, and she was wagging her tail, sitting in the backyard. She'd been nicked, jumping out of the window, but was otherwise unharmed. My husband and uncle arrived minutes later. We never called the police. I wanted to but they are untrusting of local police in general, and were also scared Candy would get put down. Needless to say, Candy got a puppuccino and lots of love. We moved pretty quickly after that. Rescue dogs are a special kind of wonderful. The scariest part of this is their persistence, even though they could surely hear the dog losing it. My theory is that they were local and had met Candy out on a walk, seen how friendly and social she was and hoped that she wouldn't actually attack. I was a 19 year old female at the time. I love camping. Anytime my friends and I came home from college, we would load up our cooler with beer, 
grab some gear, and go screw around outside. Unfortunately, when I was at school, none of my sorority sisters or other friends ever wanted to go with me, so I would often suffer withdrawals from camping. One day, the weather was way too nice to waste, so I grabbed some of my gear, hopped in a car I borrowed from a buddy, and drove to a spot that was secluded, yet within a safe distance to civilization. Camping also creeps me out somewhat, but that creepy feeling is also somewhat of a plus for me. It's the same reason that people read these stories. It's fun to be scared. So I make a little camp and get a fire going. I hadn't brought all that much to eat, but I was enjoying myself. Reading and looking around the area. That sort of thing. I got the feeling I was being watched and stopped, dead in my tracks. I hear a twig crunch over to my right, then see a doe bolt from a hundred feet or so in front of me. I laughed at myself and went back to the camp with the armful of wood I gathered. I kept freaking myself out, hearing sounds just outside of the ring of the light casted by the fire. I always get inside my head so I shrugged it off and kept whittling at a stick I had been messing with. Around one o'clock, I decide to go into my tent and snuff out the lantern. I had been slamming beers in the most unladylike fashion and smoking cheap cigars. Another reason I like camping, I can act however I want. So I passed out relatively quick. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, I start hearing footsteps. They sound pretty light and sort of timid. I think to myself that it's a deer or another animal, more likely a raccoon because I had probably left some food out. I'm still on guard though. About 30 minutes of sleeping with one eye open and I hear a rubbing noise and the tent fabric is being pushed in a bit. I don't know how I didn't shit my sleeping bag, but I just sat there paralyzed with my K-bar in my hand. I desperately wanted to thrust the knife through the tent fabric, but I was still holding out hope that it was one of my buddies from a frat joking with me. And then, as suddenly as it had all begun, it all stopped. I was starting to feel slightly more secure because daylight would be coming in about two or three hours, but I sure as shit wasn't going to sleep. All of a sudden, at about four o'clock, I realized that I should put my boots on so that if anything did happen, I would be ready. After having stayed up and keeping alert a little while longer, my friend's car alarm goes blaring. I freak the fuck out and run out of the tent. I got about two steps before something grabs me around the mouth. I opened my mouth to scream, but instead, the person's pinky finger slips in between my teeth. I've heard that people can perform superhuman features when they have huge adrenaline rushes. In my case, I just clamped down, and uh, there's no way to say this without sounding ridiculous. His finger popped off. He screamed, pulled his hand away with the missing digit falling to the ground. He took off running down the hill I was camping on, and I took off right in the opposite direction. I must have looked ridiculous to the people whose house I ran to. A little sorority girl in a wife beater, boxers, and steel toe boots. I told them what happened. They called the police, got me some real clothing, and the man at the house made me a whiskey and coke.
when the cops got there, they checked it out, and when they came back, it was light out. They brought me back so I could get my friend's car, and what I saw just made me more scared. Right next to the tent was a red gas can. He could have just lit me on fire earlier. The finger was also gone, suggesting he had come back. The kicker is, they never caught the guy, so somewhere out there is a man sitting down to eat dinner, maybe alone, maybe with a wife and couple of kids, and he's missing his right pinky.